Oh, um, uh, so so middle burner. Um, I'm, uh, so, so do you guys know much about TCM? Like who's a, who is like a? Did you do you guys know about uh, childless and herbal yeah, acupuncture? Yeah. Okay. Um, not really. No. Okay, so I'll um, I'll stick on okay. visual on the, on the terms. Um, anyways, you know, so we'll we'll kind of look at you know both liver and intestines, um, and you know why do they cause so much trouble in, in dogs, especially you know older dogs, uh, but in dogs in general, you know, I, I like to talk, talk about how you know how foods that dogs eat are affecting their gut and their liver, which are the two organs. That gets hit by what comes from the intestine first. So you know, first you know we eat foods and they go to the stomach. They they got they they, they get mixed with the uh, stomach acid. They get chopped down. It goes into the intestines. Um, intestines separate, you know, the, the good stuff from bad stuff. All the stuff that's considered good, you know, gets taken in and goes through the liver. You know, and liver has to do lots of um, um, processing to make it actually usable. Uh, for the rest of, of the cells of our body, you know, so, uh, so liver is this primary sponge um, that we have to to separate good stuff from bad stuff uh, in our in our diet. Um, so, uh, you know, majority of the problems in dogs, you know, seem to be related to how they eat, you know, so uh, as in you know, most most issues with intestines and the skin will be at least partially diet responsive. So if you can fix things about food, um, uh, if you can, you know, if you have enough time and, and you know, inclination to, to actually add some fresh food to, to dogs' diets or, 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 make, or, or make homemade diet or, um, or add some raw foods to, uh, to your dog's food, you know, it's, it usually makes a big difference as far as managing those, those inflammatory issues. Um, how many people here have dogs with touchy feely guts, as in dogs that are easily triggered, um, or they eat something weird, the skin breaks out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I actually had an um, uh, idea for, you know, maybe one of, one of the next workshops is to actually have people bring their uh, homemade diet recipes and we can do analysis and then see how, like, you know, what are they using for their dogs that that is, you know, good for their condition and what they're using that, that, that it isn't, you know, and, and, and then we can, great, you know, Kenny. play with, uh, with adding and subtracting to, um, you know, to find the right diet for for your dog's particular situation. Yeah, that's um, a great idea. Mm -hmm. so, so, so I'll just do a quick rundown uh, of this, you know, and I'll stop after each section to, you know, so we can um, talk about some specific cases or specific questions. Uh, you might have. So, uh, you know, liver gallbladder is a major detox organ in the body. It's like a, again, it's a sponge between, you know, what, what, what goes into the intestines and the rest of your uh, circulation, you know, the rest of the cells of your body. Uh, you know, about 1500 enzymatic processes simultaneously, you know, on a daily basis. Um, you know, all kinds of detoxification things that come from the outside, you know, through, through the food, things that we breathe in. Um, you know, internally, we, we generate lots of hormones, neuropeptides, inflammatory mediators, um, chemicals that cells use to communicate with each other. And, and all of these, you know, kind of really stay in circulation forever. So, um, liver has to, there has to be a sponge for those internal uh, signaling molecules as well. Histamine is a very good example of it. You know, it's a, you know, you, have, you get bitten by a, a mosquito, you know, and you get a local histamine release. But, you know, if, if you have bad liver and you don't pick up you know, there's always some seepage into the body, into the into the body fluid, into, into tissues, into a uh, into bloodstream. Eventually, you know, it's supposed to go through liver and get cleared. Um, if it's not happening, you might end up with generalized itch throughout the skin. So, uh, so this is an example where uh, a deficient uh, detox processes in liver can affect the skin. You know, if you have a trigger, inflammatory trigger that com comes along, the boom, one red spot. Before you know it, your dog starts digging bigger red spot. You know, next day, you know they even it out on the other side. You know, two big red spots, um, and it goes on and on and on, uh, depending on you know how how strong of the inflammatory trigger is. You know, sometimes these are things in a diet. You know, sometimes these are things in the environment. Your dog are sensitized through 
Um, you know, it seems like dogs are allergic to pretty much everything right now. And my theory is that really that they're allergic to grass and air, you know, because that is that is something that we cannot really help with, you know, we cannot live without air or or we cannot live you know without walking on grass. So so it's really a, a matter of of, uh, of dealing with inflammatory processes, uh, teaching body how to how to react to um, things that it perceives as noxious in a way that is not damaging to the to to the host itself himself or herself. Um, so um, what else does liver do? Uh, you know, also major role in digestion and fat metabolism. So you know, bile. It's not just like a uh, like a final goo from the biliary tract, it's like all those conjugated you know, toxins and, and antibiotics and steroids and, and hormones and all, but also you know, bile cells will actually liquefy, the, uh, they not liquefy fats, they, um, they emulsify fats, so fats break into very small um, uh, pieces so we, so we can actually absorb them. If you have poor fat, fat metabolism, you know, let's say if you, if you don't have, your bile is not flowing, you cannot break down fats, you know, usually this leads to things like well, all kinds of bad things, but uh, uh, but uh, you know, big thing, big thing is like a uh, lack of um, absorption of vitamin K. So you can actually get cutting disorders because you don't deal well with your uh, because you know there is something growing in the liver and you don't make the uh, right type of bile, or it's too thick, you know, to so make cholesterol stones. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, so. Uh, um, so, um, what else does the, the regulation of smooth flow of energy throughout the body and the control of emotions? You know? So, when you are angry, you know you're 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 told to have a liver young rising. You know, so you have red eyes, red head, like you're just screaming from your ears. So that's that is like that is a liver heat that uh, that you know people let's say like you know you drink a lot and you get really or bang That is that is what's considered liver heat. Um, uh, what else? Storage, you know, tremendous storage organ of B vitamins and micronutrients, you know, copper, selenium, uh, uh, molybdenum, zinc, you name it. Uh, both water and fat soluble uh, micronutrients uh, can be stored in the liver for a very, very long time. So, you know, it takes a while to deplete our our stores of, of those micronutrients, but, you know, it does eventually happen with, with, with chronic feeding of, of food that is not not enough, you know, not sufficient enough, or, or there's something about it that's, you know, where the cooking process has altered, altered the nutrients, so, you know, either there's some problem with, with absorption of, of those micronutrients, if they're there at all. Um, so, so that's the basic liver function. So, so what can go wrong with, with liver? So let's just kind of, let's get clinical here. So, well, so basically, there's two types of diseases, you know, of any organ. One is inflammation, and the the other one is dysfunction, which is usually a result of inflammation. So, you know, so one when things are really hot and inflamed and red. The other type is when you don't, where the function is gone. So, so you're not processing things properly anymore. In in case of a, uh, in case of intestines, for example, you can have inflammation from food allergy, you know, so you're going to have, you know, red beet lining of the intestines if you're allergic to chicken and you eat lots of it, you know, so, and your intestines are very inflamed, they're purging things out. Well, you know, it happens for a while till your body gets exhausted, at, at which point you become dysfunctional, like you, you burn out your ability to, to process things because you've been, like, shooting heavy guns at, at the stuff that you, that you think is bad or your immune system tells you that it's bad. So, so chronic inflammation usually will lead to dysfunction. Um, so, in a, so what do we see clinically? Well, um, and this is kind of like a leap of um, of imagination, maybe. You know, how do we relate liver function to skin, and how the skin looks like? You know, because seemingly they're not really connected. You know, they're you have an organ of digestion which doesn't really handle food that much visibly. You know. If you open an animal up and, and look at it, you know, and and skin that's kind of on, on the surface. So how how do these two um, uh, you know relate? Uh, well, the uh, the relation is the this chronic activation of inflammatory processes and and you know lack of the off switch, which is liver 
uh, taking up, breaking down all those, all those molecules, all those um, inflammatory mediators that make us red hot, that makes, that put us in this state of um, of of uh, emergency. Like you know, you're ready to fight. Like you know, you, you think something's toxic coming your way, and your immune system is really riled up. You know, ready to go red, steamy. You know, it's a uh, you know, this is this is one of the pre-programmed mechanisms we have to deal with stress. You know, we heat up. So, um, uh, so, so from from the traditional uh, Chinese medicine perspective, you have liver heat. You know, this is basically red eyes, red ears, red feet, red perianal area. Um, you know, there could be some itch, there could be some dryness. Um, you know, there's usually not too much itching, you know, but, but you see, you can touch the, the animal and it feels warm and it, and it looks red. Uh, usually it comes with, you know, you, you look at those dogs' tongues and they are red, they usually have fast pulses, um, they tend to be very, you know, heat sensitive, as in not very heat tolerant, uh, because they have, you know, this, this excess heat already. Um, liver heat with wind. Uh, you know, wind refers to wind refers to uh, this like leap of imagination. You know, wind is basically when the body is shaking, and this is everything from scratching, digging, trembling, all the way to seizures. When you know you have this uncontrolled wind going through your body and shaking and everything. So, um, and uh, in Chinese medicine, you know, this wind is as a consequence of your liver blood, your uh, liver stamina. Or, or liver function not being able to subdue the wind, you know. So, and you know, in Western medicine, you know, we, we talk about how all the, uh, you know, the liver is dysfunctional. It cannot get rid of the toxins that are produced internally, and and coming from the outside, you know, you will have this, um, you know, you will have this uh, irritability, this this irritation, this hyper sensation. You know, it feels to dogs, it seems like there's something on their skin that they're trying to dig out or rub off and they're just, you know, it seems like there's something in the ear that's just biting into them and, and they just start going their back legs, they start chewing, they get really incessant with their feet, they go after their perianal area, they plug their bellies out, um, all the high friction points, you know, the uh, inguinal, um, inguinal um, folds, armpits tend to heat up. Uh, so, uh, so that's you know, so so basically what when it happens, you know, when we have itch, that is you know, that means that there is wind, um, and this I guess would be helpful you know when you look at Chinese medical charts and and look at things or, or foods that you use to dispel wind or 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 get rid of wind, um, so. Uh, so that's like that's like the the dry heat. You know, then there is a liver also has this other problem. It doesn't like dampness. Um, doesn't like you know wet. So so a lot of skin cases that you see are they seem very flammy, like very greasy, very yeasty. You know the the ears aren't just you know red, but dry or or scaly. They're actually like really pungent and and flammy and moist. Um, the same with the skin. It seems like the the skin is sogging. You know, there is a hyperpigmentation. There, there is. It, it seems like there is no tone of the skin. It's it's like a jello that's that seems to be just attracted by gravity and going towards the ground. Um, so you know, this this phlegm, um, this dampness is a you know, it's, it's a very bad pathogen to get rid of. Um, it's you know, it's definitely not an easy thing to get rid of once you have patients with this type of uh, skin presentation, um, you know, red conjunctivitis, you know, so huge red eyes, um, again, armpits, you know, folds. Um, basically, you know, damp heat just means it's a wetter type of the uh, skin inflammation, as in there's also activation of oil glands and and some, you know, some whatever dog dogs have for for remainder of the sweat glands, which they have gotten rid of over course course of evolution. So. Um, so basically, like, you know, a whole bunch of skin secretions is coming out. Um, the the theory is that you know this is like the body's final way of detoxing. You know, you cannot pee it out. You know, you cannot put it in a vial and sh and shunt it to the small intestine. So it's just coming out of you through your pores, and it's and it's creating a lot of problems as it's coming out. Um, so um, and dryness or blood deficiency that that is probably one of the most popular or most most common. Uh, 
problems in this area because we have you know, both wind and dry. So, so I see lots of patients that, that tend to have, um, they don't really have inflammation. There's really nothing red about their skin on their eyes. You know, in fact, they're quite pale and, and they're dry. They have dandruff. They, you know, they, they have very weak hair. You can just pull the hair out. Uh, there's little circular things of a uh, epidermis peeling off. You know, you just like you just read little circles of of dead skin with, and it's kind of cake around the uh, the, the hair shaft. So the whole patch just comes out. So um, you know, feet are very dry. You see, um, like it's called a uh, hyperkeratosis. You know, you see, you see it on the bridge of the nose in some dogs. Uh, you see it around the uh, the pad and skin junction on the feet. Uh, so it's a very classical. Um, symptom of, um, of, uh, of, of, of liver blood deficiency, especially. Um, from previous lecture, you might remember that, you know, liver, uh, I guess, you know, every organ has um, its own representation as far as, you know, the body parts, uh, liver, like, you know, your feet and your, uh, your feet and your hands are, are also uh, indicators of your liver health and especially of, of liver blood you know so if you if you do have liver blood deficiency you tend to have pretty dry uh, uh, cracked feet or hands um, the nails you look at nails and they it's called like a French pedicure nail it's um, it's not translucent anymore it's actually it's milky you know it's, it's like a it's like when you boil a, an egg white you know it congeals it's kind of it's, it's you kind of see this dehydration um, so, um, and, you know, the pads can definitely crack, you know, there's, it's like this desert skin that's, that's very thick, but it's a lot of layers of dead skin. So, you know, cracks are very, uh, common. Um, well, and, and this is just the outside, you know, what's happening in journey is even worse when you have liver blood deficiency, because, um, another function of that liver blood is actually to moisturize your tendons and ligaments. Um, and these are all those rubbery things that keep our bones and muscles together and you know we can spin pretty quickly and you know bones are going to move you know and and muscle can generate lots of lots of force so we rely on those in between interfaces to you know so we don't just sh shatter our bones the second we turn around so um so if things are nice and supple and, and plastic, plastic well you can you can be pretty athletic and you're pretty plastic in general if you have blood deficiency and and uh, and your tendons ligaments look like those French pedicure nails. Well, things aren't as supple anymore. And mm -hmm. and if you stretch things too much, they're going to they're going to crack. Mm -hmm. So um, rupture discs, um, huge ones are <laughs> cranial cruciate ligament tears, uh, and all kinds of athletic injuries. You know, when you think of like your dog going to the beach and you know everyone was fine, Kenny Dandy, and then but like. They didn't do anything, but then all of a sudden they're, you know, they're, they're limping, you know, and there's like the bone is fine. There's, you know, they, if you can kind of distract them, it goes away after a few minutes, but it seems like they, they've sprained something. So that is, that is a classical uh, indication of a liver blood being deficient and tendons not being as plastic as they should be. Um, uh, other, you know, so, and some other things, you know, like poor stamina, uh, emotionally, blood deficiency will manifest as a fearful behavior or, or anxiety, like a floating anxiety. Um, and uh, how to, you know, so how to deal with those problems, you know, so, um, well, you know, so there's three principles of, well, there's, I guess, there's three things that you can do to deal with inflammation and dysfunction. Um, and maybe I didn't... Well, the the order kind of depends on on what kind of problems you're dealing with, but uh, but it's, you know it's usually a it is a holistic approach, you know. So you have to, you know, both cool things down and restart the function. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a two way thing usually. So uh, you have to clear the heat. You know, if you have inflammation, you, well, it's really good to eat cooling foods like raw foods. You know, fruits and vegetables. You know, pears, uh, apples, melon. Uh, root vegetables, leafy greens, um, uh, you know, beans, um, what else, zucchini, uh, other, you know, other stuff for like, like nectarine speeches. Um, you want to eliminate grains or simple carbs, so foods that basically have high glycemic index, you know, they, they make your blood glucose shoot up after you eat it, and 
which is you know, not is not always an inflammatory trigger, but it's definitely an inflammatory fuel. You know, so if you have inflammation already, the the high uh, foods with um, um, high glycemic index tend to create bouts of inflammation. Which and inflammation is like a you know it's a nasty thing. Like once you like throw the fire in there, it can it can simmer or it can spread too. You know and and it's like a focus point for for a patient to start digging to, to try to put this fire off and you know you can actually spread it for throughout the body clear dump you know for for in cases of of the flaminess in the skin or, or eyes or ears you know sometimes you see those ears are just full of nastiness and, and like eventually the flame congeals where like the ear canals are basically closed you know so dogs will have to have things like uh, external ear canal ablation, like they, they use their ear canals because they're closed up and they're, they're it's just one gigantic pallet uh, mm -hmm. and horribly painful, chronic infections, you know, miserable. So so how do you clear dump? Well, the the trick to clearing dampness, to getting rid of the flemminess is actually to jumpstart your digestion, you know, it's actually tonify the, uh, the, the spleen chi. Uh, so things like probiotics, which, you know, which can be phlegm forming, so you have to be careful like how you're using them and how much um, digestive enzymes. You know, there are um, who we'll talk about like you know spongy confining foods, but um, like there are there are fruits and veggies that have this you know like tart, soury taste, like um, like when you think of uh, like the core from the broccoli or from cauliflower. That kind of taste is very good to dispel dampness. So you know, so radish. And of course, well, horror is really great for people, but it's really spicy for dogs. Uh, but uh, like actual radish, uh, black Spanish radish is, is actually very good. Um, daikon, uh, sprouts, um, they, they're kind of, they have this like bitter, crispy taste to them as well. And apple is, is a very nice food to break a flame. Um, so, so, and then tonify blood, which is to basically, you know, stuff itch and subdue the wind. Well, blood tonifying foods are tend to be those rich and gooey foods like you know liver, eggs, canned sardines, fish oil, avocados, uh, you know, root, ve root vegetables, um, dark leafy greens. Well, the, I guess these aren't really that heavy, but you know the first the first group, the the eggs, sardines, liver, avocados. You know these are pretty heavy, and and you have to be careful using those in patients that have chronic issues. You know whatever they are as far as you know, liver inflammation because sometimes there's actually the secondary effect on the gut function when you have you know, liver heat. So you can also have dysfunctional spleen. So you don't want to eat foods that are very rich because you can actually clog up your system and, and they'll backfire. You'll actually see more damp. You'll see more, you know, like, like all of this goes into the colon because intestines kind of pick it up. So, so you end up causing colitis. So you, you see like all kinds of like mucus and gel and, and and flammy stuff, you know, coming out. So um, not very pretty. Uh, and 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 phlegm can really heat up, you know. So if you have lots of phlegm, it's it's going to create its own heat. I think of, of the wet blanket; it's gonna it's gonna start heating up by itself, you know. So so eventually you see like blood, like frank blood in a in a poop, you know, and that's and that mucus because you have you're actually injuring the uh, the lining of the of the large intestine. Mm -hmm. um, so. Hey, but you know you can, but you have your really rich blood tannins, and you have your really lean blood tannins, like all those leafy greens and veggies, and carrots, you know, and then you have your liver and avocado. Well, you can combine them, and you know, and, and then it kind of evens out as far as like the fat content and and um, and and uh, caloric density, you know, how rich the food is actually is, you know. So uh, because you know, remember, we we all have a a capacity to, to break down a certain amount of rich food, but you know, once you pass the capacity, you end up, you know, clogging up, and either you know you start feeling really phlegmy, or actually have a blowout. You know, your intestines actually shunt things through too quickly, and and you end up with with some degree of lower intestinal dysfunction. It's usually, you know, colitis with, with that, you know, gassiness, soft poops, poops that start firm and soft, uh, straining, uh, again, various amounts of mucus and and then you eventually blood uh, so um, and what was the blood from again you said irritation in the yeah the, the blood in the in the stools you mean yeah the blood in the mucus well whether there's mucus or not the the blood comes from injury to the to the 
blood vessels, you know. So when you think of inside of your colon, like if you are in colonoscopy, you know, it's, it's just as thick as, as the inside of your mouth or inside of your small intestines. So if you have inflammation there, it's not, it's like having, it's called ulcerative colitis, you know, people get it, you know. So you get ulcers, it actually get breaks in the uh, in your, in your epithelium, your, your, your lining, you know, which is a... Uh, um, so the blood comes out and stuff. Okay. Yeah, so you have you know trickle of blood and um and you know and, and the colon is definitely full of rough things so you know it can scrape at it. They don't have a healthy mucosal lining, it's very easy to <laughs> Disharmonies and skin issues. Uh, does anyone have a, a pet with a skin case that's very unresponsive to what you're doing so far? Yes. Yes. Yes, definitely. <laughs> uh, she's only eight and a half, but she's uh -huh. been pitching for a long time. We've tried shots, we've tried every type of thing. Um, food. Mm -hmm. Is it um, okay? So is she, is, she, uh, is she dry, itchy, or is she? There's no flaking or anything. Okay, is she yeah. uh, like how are her ears like or her feet? Like does she does she smell yeasty? Okay, nope. like nothing greasy about her. Um, you said no flakes. No. Nope. Does she shed a lot? No. Nope. Okay. How about her feet? She hasn't had any feet issues until recently. She didn't. Mm -hmm. It seemed like it just a, I don't know, you know, one time into it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's her whole. It's her back mostly. So mm -hmm. is there is there hives? Do you see the bumps on her? Occasionally. Mm -hmm. But it's usually just maybe one. Uh -huh. So, so this relates to you know this is this is definitely a, a liver disharmony where you have a failure of of a, of clearing of certain inflammatory substances that tend to promote hives or allergic breakouts on top of the body. Um, it is and it's coming with like certain types of histamine inducing allergies. You know they they can be inhaled they can, they can be. Uh, you know, it's uh, like it's it's really hard sometimes, especially without knowing someone to and know what what actually you responded to in the past to know whether you have like you you like your your system just freaking out because you're inhaling so much stuff that's bad for you, or your liver is is dysfunctional and, and you don't have like the proper clearing of the of the inflammatory substances. Um, is her gut pretty good? Like, does she digest well? Mm -hmm. So no, so she's and she's like a commercial food, uh, so maybe raw, some fresh food. raw, raw food. Okay, yeah. great, excellent. Yeah. Um, so okay, so you, well, it sounds like, and she's That's not fine. hot, you know. So so she, you've you've cleared the heat. Like no, the heat is not a problem. Using very cooling foods for her, mm -hmm. and uh, you know she, uh, I suspect that. Well, I guess you know wind is a very deep pathogen. Also, just like just like a, just like the phlegm, you know, So I guess you're. Um, you know the food is clean, right? There's nothing in it that the liver has to work really hard on. Uh, it's you know it's very cooling. Let's say you know the inflammation is out of control. I'm sure you tried a few types of meats, yep. so you don't know like so. There, it's not a food allergy, right? Right. Pretty so, sure it's not. We've tried all kinds of things. So so you know this is like where herbals come in handy. Well, and this is also like where you need you can focus on your liver and and ask like, well, is my animal having issues with its liver? Like you know, does it? do like all of those 1500 daily functions the liver is supposed to be doing um, is actually happening uh, because you know she's not really exposed to any more things in the air or in the food or in the, well in the air that you are right then you're not having this reaction so um, so so what I would do for her is you know is, I have my own allergies that's a different story totally well <laughs> maybe they're similar but um, well so for someone like 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 your dog, you know. So I would say, you know, you can do a um, like a micronutrient uh, or glandular liver um, tonic. You know, the glandulars are basically what? Sorry. Glandular. So you know, they're they're basically you know like when you when you have bad heart, like you're supposed to be eating lots of hearts of other animals, and 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 so it's good for your heart. If you have joint issues, you eat lots of glucose, which is basically cartilage, you know, so or ligaments and. And uh, you know, if you're having like immune dysfunction, you, you drink marrow soup. Well, if you if you having um, if you have liver issues, you know you um, or what you know we call it liver issues, you want to be eating liver. Liver that you buy in a store or where you buy liver is usually from animals that are very young. You know, so they're not really depleted. You know, they're like they and they've been you know they've been growing very nicely. You know, there's there's nothing sick about the liver, so, so things are looking well. So it probably has a decent amount of nutrients that your dog's liver might have run out 
on already. So, so and there's some you know, there's some dry preparations as well, like you know, dry liver treats to actual like glandular vesicates, like you know, dry, dried uh, organs that you can sprinkle on top of the food. How, uh, how do you tell that you've been of the organs? No, no, no. Uh, there, there, <laughs> no, there. Many are bad. In fact, um, I, uh, well, it's um, yeah, you know. So, uh, I, you know, I, I make a point of you know keeping up to speed on like four or five supplement companies that I work closely with, you know, and and um, you know, and I and I use their products to fortify the diet of my patients, you know. So I, I use a company called Standard Process, which is a pretty old company, you know, it's uh they're in Wisconsin. They they own this four hundred acre organic farm where they grow all their beets and carrots and and pea pea vine and, and buckwheat and, and they get they, they get uh, they get organ meats from commercial operations. They don't they don't get the organic stuff because it's you know the sheer amount of stuff that they're using. So um there's definitely some concerns of like, you know, Heavy metals, antibiotic pesticides, but but uh, you know, but but for, for most part, it's actually very they're very effective glandular tonics and they're very fresh. They taste good. You know, they, they taste like they taste like liver basically. They taste like dried liver most of them. Um, so and so that's one thing. You know, the other thing is that like, there's actually like your dog just the, the function that it takes to not have those hives on the back or, or that itch. Is gone, you know. It's it's like something's missing. Like there's some enzymatic pathway missing. So you either can like somehow like reconnect the wires or suppress the bad reaction that's happening. So you know you can suppress the reaction of using steroids or antihistamines. But you know this is where like Chinese herbals are very helpful. You can actually you know help to like either shunt um, detox through different pathways using herbals. You know, so so if you don't have like one, you know, body has redundant pathways of breaking things down and getting rid of them. So if one is not, you know, if one is not working out, well, you feed your body different, you know, if you feed your body different things, it's going to produce things that look a little bit different, you know, so, and, and they can be, and we're talking like very tiny differences, but it might be enough for the end products to be shunted down a different pathway of, of, of the excretion or, or, or breakdown. So, um, but you know, definitely, there's a you know, if, if you if you clean up your food and you and you are tonified, like you know, if you fortify it with with blenders, if, if the if the herbals are not uh, working, if you you know, if you do acupuncture, like there's a you can use acupuncture to to deal with like inappropriate inflammatory reactions. You know, sometimes dogs dogs will have inflammatory um, uh, episode or, or inflammatory. Event like you know if something stings them you know or, or they get a bad reaction to vaccine you know like they were fine with you know two months before rabies they got rabies shot you know then like they're always itchy you know there's always something that, that's itching them there's no please using your front line everything but they're still itchy so um, so sometimes like the immune system is just turned on and it does not want to shut off like it's it's still it's always like it's, it's sort of maybe like low RPMs where you know it's not like Bright red and break us everywhere, but it's, but but you see it like you, know, you see it uh, you see it at night when they're when they're calming down, get ready to to go to sleep. Like you see all this inflammation rising. You know it's like body's just you know like the thermostats are so high. You know that that you see you know inflammation. You see persistent, excessive, oftentimes it's non-productive inflammation. So what what. I'm curious to what you're proposing. What solutions? You uh, so, well, it sounds like you you know you can uh, you can add more um, you can add more liver organisms to to their raw foods. You know, so you can you can like go from you know ten percent of liver, which is probably what's, what's in the product that you're using, to you know fifteen or, or twenty. So okay. you can let her. How big is your dog? She's sixty pounds. Okay, so like you know, okay, uh, if she has no like chicken allergies or beef allergies, you, know, you can do a, like a chicken liver. Like two or three ounces of chicken liver a couple of times a week. And freeze dried liver treats? Is that good or not good? Yeah, if you you know if you find a good source of it, sure. Um, and uh, you know, some like other micronutrients, you know, these seem to be things that come from dirt, as in like, you know, there's some in like, certain dirts that that makes your body work better, you know. So so I think root, root vegetables, like like beets and carrots and, and parsnips, you know, these are very good things to uh, to make up for for 
you know, lack of micronutrients that, you know, FDA doesn't know about, and it's not on the list of things you're supposed to be eating every day, um, you know, so um, it's, you know, there's things that keep you alive and there's things that, that keep you healthy and they're, you know, they're kind of different things. Um, so, so there's that, you know, so, so you cannot fortify the food, you cannot, you know, you, you give a, a boost to the food that, that, that she's eating, um, you know, then height, you know, sometimes dogs will present symptoms in very individual and peculiar ways that you have to, you know, see her tongue and pulse to tell you about the herbal to use for her. Um, and, uh, you know, if she's good about acupuncture, which not every dog is, you know, then we can talk about, you know, how to modulate the inflammatory reactions and if there's something else that can be done to to bring down the uh, the heat, you know, if, if there is any, you know, if, I, if, if, you, if you're just used to it and I, I'm like, well, uh-uh, like she's really running hot, you know, because people do get used to their dog's symptoms and you know like you think that oh it's okay if my dog poops four times a day and it's gonna you know it's always it always leaves a stain on a, on a concrete well that's not really okay but you know you can you can live with it um so like you know having bouts of diarrhea which are definitely hard to ignore um so but it's a good one you know it sounds like you've done some like good prep work and eliminate a lot of things that could be a problem and, and oh, totally right um and it happens to dogs. It happens to dogs that are puppies. You know, it happens to really, really young dogs. And and then you gotta wonder. It seems that there is a, and then you can part of your like health status you inherit. You know, it's like if, you, if your parents were not healthy, you probably not gonna be. You, you really have to go an extra mile to keep yourself healthy. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with the same problems, if, if not worse problems. Um, so. Um, Good case. Good case. Why your parents? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you should. I mean, uh, you know, when you think of the uh, the breeding practices in, in this country, you know, it's, it's definitely some unhealthy. Um, you know, the, the practices that don't um, promote um, gene diversity. Uh, you know, so so you, you know what happens to in, inbred individuals? They tend to not be very healthy. Um, in, in figuring out an appropriate way to treat an itchy dog, is it important um, to figure out whether it's more environmental or more a food allergy? Yes. Um, and how common are food allergies, really? Oh, they're very common. Because a lot of Western vets don't think they're common at all. Well, so so how about you you, uh, you try to think about it a bit of a different way, you know? So, like, things that come at you from the outside, they, they can come from the gut because you have eaten it, or they can come from the outside because you're breathing it in and it's landing on your eyes and it's going up your nose, uh, and it's landing on your skin. And, uh, well, I mean, what, what happens if, you know, if you start bleaching on your skin, it's going to get red, right? You know, so your, your body decides that, you know, there is some tissue damage and it's, and it's heating up, it's trying to fight something. The same thing happens on, on the intestinal lining. So, um, so both skin or mucous membranes so inherent allergens and food allergens can be your inflammatory triggers. But the problem is that, that this regulation, this, um, this overzealous reaction that the body has to things that are non-self, um, you know, we're not supposed to like, attack things that are good for us, like food, you know? So why is it happening? Because, you know, the body says like, well, you know, this, this I, you know, I guess we learn that things are bad for us because we have bad reactions to them, you know? So, um, and sometimes, you know, like, and your immune system actually has very good memory, so it remembers things, you know. So if you, if you, if your body didn't like a bee sting once, it's not gonna like it the next time around either, you know. So the same with the food. Uh, if you if you eat the same food over and over again, well, your body is liking it less and less and less too, you know. So so that is the basis of sensitization, like you know, being exposed to something for too long, and eventually your immune system getting really pissed off about it and and treating it as a parasite trying to purge it out. So, which is like, you know, you're trying to get rid of that flea that's, that happened to be like a, you know, a dust mite particle or, or fungal spore, but, you know, think it's a, it's a bug trying to dig into your skin. So, um, so think of this, yes, there are, there are tons of food allergens, you know, uh, and, uh, and there's tons of inhaled allergens, you know, and, and, and yes, you can do uh, diet trials and, and manage your pet 
with food that doesn't cause the reaction, keeps the skin healthy. Or you can do your antihistamine, you know, suppress the histamine release and or do the allergy shots and, and make the body desensitized to whatever it thinks is bad coming at it, uh, coming at it, you know, through mucous membranes. Uh, but um, but your immune system, if it's really unhappy, is gonna get annoyed with other things all the time. So whatever you're exposed to, you know, you'll be getting your allergy tests every half a year. They'll probably be different every time, but there'll, there'll be some high ones. You know, that you'll probably find a few things that that your body is really not happy about. Um, they're usually very different after you've done your, your allergy uh, vaccines and and the dog relapses and 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 yeah, it's not allergic to chicken anymore or or dust mites, but it's now it's you know now it's oak and and grasses um, and potatoes. So um, so it's really you know it's, it's really those inappropriate immune reactions. You know the, the immune system is the is the most complex system of our body. You know, it's like how you know we go through this like soup of of particles and and eat things that like you know we, we don't have microscopes in our eyes, so we don't know like what's toxic, what's not, you know, but, um, you know, our immune system has to decide like, you know, this is good for me or is it not, you know, so and if it's good for you, you take it in, if it's not, it gets left behind, um, and, and it's like, and you are a sponge, right, like, you know, you, like, stuff is just pouring through you, so, um, so, you know, if you, if you eat foods and, and your body thinks it's, it's poison or needs to get rid of it, well, you're going to have lots of inflammatory problems, you have inflammation that, um, you know, and again, it's like this. It's like this fire that that starts and never wants to shut off. Um, and um, and you know, again, it, it becomes unproductive. And in fact, becomes damaging. It, it produces a whole bunch of inflammatory substances, free radicals, like you know, very nasty, toxic chemicals that body uses to to injure other things that are non-self. Um, and you have a self-propelling inflammation. You know, that might require extremes such as you know using uh, corticosteroids like prednisone to suppress so uh well you know like why is the immune system like so pissed off about stuff and you're like what happened like you know why is the immune system so so reactive well some you know the, a big part of it is, is over vaccination like you know the uh, using immunostimulants to to teach you to teach your immune system a lesson about this virus or this bacteria i mean it's like hey like pff, like here's your rabies shot you know it's a uh, it's a killed virus, but it, but it comes with a whole bunch of really nasty aluminum salts, which just flips on all the inflammatory switches, you know, and if you had some inflammation already, well, you're gonna, it's gonna get worse because of that. That would be considered like a, like a wind toxin, you know, that, that affects the liver and causes internal wind, you know, because it's, um, because it's, it's kind of like, uh, like a mosquito bite, you know, it's, 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 it's an antigen that's injected through the skin. So, um, God, I know that the answer your question at all. Probably not. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, from what you're saying, it almost sounds like, in a way, it, it almost doesn't matter whether it's environmental or food, because your approach isn't going to be that different. No, it isn't. You know, the, well, and and you know, you can, but you can definitely use. You can rarely choose what's in the air around you unless you move to a different area or get a you know air purifier, you know, or um, or cut cut down the trees and don't plant. Um, Things you know, and, and make sure you don't have mold in your walls. But uh, you can definitely choose what you eat, and and food can be used therapeutically because you know what you eat, like the, all those nutrients that you're eating. Um, well, a like gut is a very big uh, place where inflammation gets triggered. You know, so if, if your body doesn't like food, it's it's a it's a big game changer. If you if your but if your gut doesn't mind, like you know. A dog can eat dry dog food that's horrible quality and, and, and not have loose tools. It's it's really good. You know, there is like you, you're not annoying the intestines. So so it's usually easier to treat other inflammatory problems. If your gut gets inflamed easily, you know, when you challenge it with different things, and that's gonna make everything else um, not so easy to control. So. Um, so yeah, and there's again, there's there's definitely foods that. Um, that are well again foods that you might remember that that will that will induce inflammation and there is foods that are kind of cooling they're new to your body and the the nutrients that you get from those foods is such that your body will produce weaker inflammatory substances so it's like inflammation will start cutting itself down 
you know, a big example is using fish oil or omega-3 fatty acids to, to uh, impact inflammation, to impact the, the strength, the potency of the inflammatory substances that your body produces. You know, so if you take, if you're allergic to a mosquito bites and you, and you take, you know, your fish oil for three to four weeks, you know, you seem to be less reactive to it, you know, because your body doesn't make such, um, uh, such injurious chemicals to contract the, uh, you know what, what it's seeing as, as 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 something that's not good to to the body. So, um, yeah, you know, and it's a you know, to me it's kind of it's almost like a lifestyle thing. You know, it's a, like people feed their dogs well, pe or we eat things because we believe these things are good for us. You know, and we, we believe the foods that we feed to our dogs are good for them. Well, why are their dogs sick? You know, because you know maybe we have some misconceptions about like what is good for our dogs, and 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 you know, may, uh, not every dog is the same, and and some dogs need dry food, and some dogs need raw foods, and some dogs need homemade diets that have no chicken and have no grains to to stay healthy. Just like the same with people, right? Like you know, you have people that that you know can't have dairy, mm -hmm. or are you too shellfish? You know, so um, it's it, it's you know to me. To me, diet is a way of both kind of shutting down inflammation and um, and, uh, and and using it therapeutically to produce you know, acute cooling or anti-inflammatory results. So it's like a, it's like a, it's a, there's like a there's like a immediate response to diet and there's a long-term response to diet as well. And the the the, the, the uh, at the end of the tunnel where you want to be is your immune system not triggering as easily and um, and yes if you if you, have, if you are really, really allergic to chicken you're gonna have a little reaction like you have like you know some bloating and like this bit of blue stools with mucus not like a bloody blowout yes do you have any suggestions for treating sprains and soft tissue injuries yeah you know the uh, part of it relates to you know the, the way uh, what I said about you know the the blood flow to like when you have dry tendons or short to injury they are such because they are not getting much nutrition you know they're they're like they're starving they're they're just dry twigs or that you can pop open you know you can you can crack them very easily but, uh, it's like fibers are so dull there there's like nothing elastic about it well what do you do about it you know, well you have to and with ligaments you need you need to need to get on it asap because you don't really want too much scar tissue around your tendons ligaments or, or moving parts because it's it is like a downward spiral so what you do is uh, you do massage you basically you want to improve a local blood flow like for athletic injuries you know the best thing is actually massaging physical therapy you know you want to bring the blood to the area you want to make those repairs as quick as possible you you want to have any lingering pain at the end of the month after you've injured yourself. Okay. You know, the longer things stay, the more likely they are to stay for good. So, um, so it's uh, you know, it's, it's really important if you have a dry dog to you know to make sure that you that they get some warm up before you start throwing stick for for them. You know, so like don't go into a high impact activity like at six in the morning when the dog just got up. You know, so it's a nice hour walk and then. Then you can do some high torque activity. That's did that answer your question. Somewhere massage, massage for yeah. uh, for for acute yeah. sprains, and well, and a whole bunch of diet thing too. Of course, you need to address the the underlying weakness of tendons and ligaments, which is uh, which is this poor, you know, it's the same circulation as circulation to those dry cracked tips of your of your of your fingers. You know, it's the same. That, that's how you how that's how those ligaments are, and that's why they get strain so easily. Okay, so so in terms of the categories of food that might so these would be this would be the the blood tonics. You know, this is this is like you know you want to put some more lubricant in there. Uh, okay. So this this would be like a when you have uh, when you don't have very good stamina and you tend to injure easily you have liver blood deficiency and uh, there's a whole bunch of foods that you can eat to help with your liver blood. Which is you know this this internal ability to to send moisture and nutrients to places that don't really get a very good blood supply in general. He, he doesn't seem to have a lack of energy, and he, he, he he's extremely restless when he's he's got to be kept on. Mm -hmm. 
running because mm -hmm. of an injury. Yeah. Um, but he, he does seem to injure himself, you know, pretty regular intervals. I know some neat, like, you know, one and a half year old rat fighters that are bouncing over the walls and they're dry as a bone. Like, I mean, they have, they have silver metallic pads. They're, like, sleek, you know? Um, and, and yet these dogs will have a busted cruciate, you know, in about six to 12 months. Yeah. Um, because they'll spin and they'll pop. Um, so, so these dogs, and it's amazing. I mean, I, I have patients that, like even, you know, you add some water to the kibble and you and you pop a couple of fish oils and some yogurt and like, it is amazing how, how quickly that makes a, an impact on, on a skin. Like, so again, you look at places that, that get this not so great blood supply. You know, like your dogs, you look at their head and they're like nice, bright, shiny black and whatever, you know, and, and then like it gets duller and duller as it gets the rump and rump is like all dull and flaky and you can pull the hair out. You know, it's, it doesn't really get that much blood, you know, so this is your barometer of how good your microcirculation is, you know, if you have strong hair on the rump, if you cannot like pull, not the undercoat, but like the actual primary hair from the from the butt or, or from the hip area, well, that's, you have good microcirculation. Your hair follicles are getting good food, good good moisture levels, you know, good good nutrients, you know, so, so those tiny little blood vessels, you know, lig ligaments and tendons are they are open up, they're like the size of the hair, but they're actually, they're open up, you know, they are carrying some moisture in, they're not like collapsed completely and start up. So, um, uh, so, so yes, blood tonics, they're called. Um, and uh, I don't think I have anything on my website about it, but uh, I know this has a, well, this has a pretty decent write up on a, because it's a, such a, it's such a common problem here, you know, I, 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 it seems like my, most of my patients need some blood tonics, you know, because they come in and they're pale in their tongue and they have no pulses and they, and they are flaky. So, um, so, so, you know, make sure there is a proper moisture content uh, to the food, you know, so if it's, if you are going to keep feeding the, uh, the the dry kibble, make sure it is a, a same moisture level as the body, which is 70%. So for each cup of dry, you add a cup of, of, of fluid, even if it's cold water, it'll bring it pretty much to a 70% moisture level. Uh, so you don't cause a, this flush dehydration after eating, which, you know, is like another influencer trigger in itself. Um, um, and, uh, you know, you. <laughs> fatty acids, you know, so, so how does fish oil work? Well, it, it, it works basically by thinning your blood, thinning blood and, 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 uh, and, and working on the lining of the of distant blood vessels and, and opening it up a little bit, you know, so you have, like, you have, you have thinner blood reaching further out, um, and, and that's how you, that's how you feed your tendons and ligaments and, and, and hair phone calls and, and nails and, and surface in general. So, so essential fatty acid sources, you know, avocado, you know, eggs, fish oil, you know, liver, liver will store lots of essential fatty acids. Um, um, and, and then again, those, uh, the root vegetables are more for like those other micronutrients that are necessary for thinning of the blood and, 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 and healthy endothelial lining, like lining of the blood vessels. Eggs cooked or like avocado? Yeah, very good. Yes. Eggs cooked or raw? Um, I, you know, the fats are seem to be the best when they are the freshest, you know, like the more you heat the fats, the like, burn, like burn, burn fat is basically, basically a, a carcinogen, right? You know, so, uh, so you want as little heat added to the fatty acids as possible because you don't want to denature them. You know, there's all this talk about how we bubble hydrogen through palm oil to get our, you know, margarine and how bad it is for us. You know, it's, uh, you, yeah, it's, you really want to mess with fats because fats are like what makes you, like we are, we look pretty solid, but it's, it's you know, our every cell is basically body globule, you know, so, and if these aren't, um, like, if these are dangerous, they're like, they have, like, weird little limbs coming off, you're going to have, like, weak cells and, and chronic cell injury and chronic inflammation as resulting from it. So, um, so yeah, what I do with eggs is, when I do a homemade diet for my dogs, I, when I'm done with the, like, browning, not browning, like, steaming the, the, the ground meat, muscle meat, and, and I added my liver, my gizzards, and they're, they look like they've lost their pink, barely, I throw the egg in and, and I wait till it starts getting hazy and I shut off the heat and, and the, the white part will, will cook all the way through, but the egg I'll just smack open and it'll be like a, 
yellow blue. And your, your meat and gizzards, you, you steam slightly, you're saying, you don't give them to the raw. Uh, well, I have, I have two of like 16 year olds, you know, and, or I don't know, how old is Parker? <laughs> uh, uh, two real there. dogs, and they're they can, they're not eating you know, chicken backs or anything. So but I I you know I have to uh, I I don't give them raw foods. You know, like my younger dog, the eight year old dog, yeah, he can he can eat the chicken gizzard, but you know he he can have like a chicken neck once a week, but that's about it. You know, he's like his his digestion is not that strong either. So um, so again, if you have like very deficient Animals like very weak animals. You don't want to. You don't want to it's too put like another to job on them. You know, like, down yeah, like you know, hey, you, to you are like so deeply like here cook some, you know, cook some meat, you know, in your in your intestines. You know, it's uh, it's it is like it is very draining. And and you see like you know if you um if you put out your digestive fire like if you don't have a strong one it, and if you like eat something that's very cold too too clammy too too phlegmy, it ends up causing diarrhea. You know, you have to have like a really good. Well, middle burner is what we're talking about, you know. So you have to have this good digestive heat that cannot spread into the, your liver, because that's like the other thing. Like, you know, you have like food, you, you have like food allergies, and I'll do the finger quotes, you know, that uh, that cause inflammation, and then um, and they kind of it kind of steams up to your towards your liver, and because you know, like your gut gets like the gut gets all the food, the immune system lives around it, the gut tube, you know, gets when it gets activated, that's when it gets inflamed, well, it all drains to the liver. So, which is, you know, this is your your food skin correlation. Okay. Um, so, you know, you're eating food that's causing it, uh, intestinal inflammation, uh, it's making the liver upset, you know, then you're seeing all those inflammatory substances bubbling to the skin and you are red and, and you're pumping stuff from your pores and 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 it feels like you're being invaded. Yes. Um. So this whole talk of inflammation, um, it makes me think of arthritis. Like, uh, would you connect the diet? Would you feed the same cooling diet in order to try to combat that inflammation? Um. Yes, yeah, useful for to cool the joints. Also, uh, you know, joints. Um. This is a topic for next one because you know, joints are. We'll talk about lower burner, like your lower jaw, which is your kidneys and, and, and bladder. So, and everyone's gonna have problems with the lower jaw because eventually, like you, you end up in the kidney part of your life, which is your old age, and you're gonna have the kidney issues, which are your joints are not so great, and and your hair is graying, and your ear, your hearing is, is going away, your teeth are falling out, your bones are getting crumbly. So, um, so yeah, th that that is that is a part of the. And that is your kidneys running hot. That is like the kidney yin um, deficiency, the inability of kidneys to control its inflammatory processes. Oh, but you know, it's, it's one big bag, right? You know, so if you have, if you have like you know bad bout of diarrhea because you just ate some food that's not really good for you, all your all the injury is gonna like light up, right? You know, it's, you, you're gonna get showered with these inflammatory substances from from the gut, but they'll but there'll be like a echo, you know, in all that scar tissue that you have acquired throughout your life. Mainly your your moving parts, your joints, your tendons, ligaments, your, your bones. You know, if, like your broken bones will like they light up, you know, so you can remember your old scars. Um, so this, uh, and I guess you know the, this whole scar thing. Well, scars in the skin, the same thing. Like if you have inflammatory bouts in the gut, they'll they will shower like any other part, any other type of scar tissue, including the the scars we have on our skin, um, and um, and you know, and then like you know, Chinese have the, the this elaborate system of of using external points to affect the organ function. And if you have like an inflamed scar, and it happens to be on your on your channel or your, on your on your meridian or on the acupuncture point, well, it's like again, it's like a it's like someone has uh, you know hit the button on the switchboard and. and and it's not popping out, you know. It's uh, so it's, it's going to be a problem. It's going to lead to stagnation. It's usually like you see development of nodules, or not where the scar is, but somewhere along the, the channel. Um, so, but yeah, the uh, you know, I guess because it's Mandeville fo focus, you know, we, we've talked a lot about uh, arthritis, and we'll kind of we'll roll through our arthritis. I'm sure every. Yeah, it always comes up, you know, because it's yeah. uh, because it, it is it is a big part of it, and 
and, and you know, and then like inflation in your joints also affects inflation in your liver or your gut. You know, so if you if you sprain your knee and you're painful and swollen, well, that will affect your digestion. Like you're gonna have, well, and, and it's like a true dysfunction. Like you know, you won't be able to process your food very well because your body is busy fixing something. So you like your your defensive energy has been redirected um, from like you know house three processes to emergency procedures. Do you feel like there's any? I mean, other patient stuff like this. Do you feel like there's any food that you should say like? This is kind of like, well, this is back to this whole food allergy thing, you know. Right. Yeah, there are definitely foods that seem to cause inflammation, mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, and yeah, you know, it happens that, that foods of the high glycemic index, like starchy kibbles will do that, you know, mm -hmm. so, and usually they're made of something like corn or wheat okay. or rice flour, you know, so it's like a very easy, uh, like, uh, guilty party to, to point out, you know, it's, it's, it's very obvious, you know, it's like there's a very easy correlation between eating the lemon rice kibble and, and your dog having bloody colitis, you know, so, and you go on that, that and play and it doesn't happen, you know, so, um, but, uh, well, avoid foods that are, or things that, are, that you are hypersensitive to, you know, so, so yeah, through a trial and error, you'll figure out what your dog does well on, and what he or she does not, you know, so, so some, some things will produce more heat, you know, panting, you know, bloated belly, uh, you know, poor quality of poops, and some things, you know, will, will, will be cool, you know, so, um, but, uh, it, yeah, I really don't want to, like, yeah. go on a witch hunt against <laughs> grains or anything, because, okay, yeah. you know, they're, they're really nice plants, you know, and <laughs> <laughs> they're, you know, it's like, wheat is great, you know, it's, um, and so it's rice, and so it's like whole grains are amazing, and that's like. Right, my doctor really love white rice, but I don't think of white rice as being a good. I mean, it's just to make her sick, you know. Yeah, but like I mean, maybe you have like very small, very cold dogs that need lots of yang. They need lots of heat to to stay healthy. And you know, if you if you have like a, hundred fifty pounds like, big, I know mastiff that's all folds and mm -hmm. like just running, just like running hot from standing, you shouldn't feed it rice because it's not heat that. But if you have like tiny little things that are skin and bones that, that, you know, like, if they aren't spinning around, they have to be under 10 blankets. Yeah, rice is great. Rice and chicken is, is a perfect diet for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if we actually went through, I guess we kind of rolled into the spleen issues, which are the digestive issues. Um, any, um, how are we doing it? Time? Um, no, no but it's going out, to be posted. I don't even have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> it's like the best we're doing in time. <laughs> All right. And what is this is like our dinner hour. Or are we done? Well, hey, I think this is a this is a good time to like stop and do a panel, right? Um, because I know so like so. How about you guys bring some issues that you're having managing your um, your dog you know, and, and be specific. You know, tell me like what you think is happening and like, how you are using food to address it. Can I ask you about a specific supplement? I don't mean to waste other people's time, but do you know that, I'm sure you know, that is that worth uh, Well, there's actually a translation. It's uh, the, uh, uh, you know, Feng Shui, like Feng is the wind. Yeah. This is the this is the wind here. This is like this is to make you stop itch. Um, and so it, the dry, uh, dry hot, it, uh, dry it. Well, you know, you, you can be dry, you can be, you can be hot, you can be hot and moist, and you can have wind, or you have, you can have no wind. So like, it can be itchy or not. And this is, this is, and usually, you're dry, you're, you're dry energy, you know. So, so most of those remedies will have blood tonifying herbals, things that, that make you less dry on your, on your fingers, and they have herbals to clear wind to get rid of this scratch shake tendency. So, um, but again, the... Do you think products like that have value, or...? Oh, totally. Yeah, um, okay. No, I, I, I wanted my own horn, but I use herbals extensively to deal with really bad skin allergies and, and you know, skin inflammation. And, and how do you figure out an appropriate dose when you buy a human product like that? 
Oh, it's uh, you know, like a, your fifty-pound dog is like a human being, basically, as okay. far as like how they metabolize things and and the basic you know metabolic rate. Um, you know, so smaller dogs you have to usually use higher doses per per pound of body weight. You know, larger dogs you have to cut back on the you know grams or milligrams per per pound of body weight. You know, it's a there's like um, surface area to volume thing that you use to, to calculate basic metabolic rate. Uh, yeah, the, like a rule of hand is like, uh, if you have a 50 pound dog, it's, it's what they say for, for people, if it's 25, cut in half, it's 100, you know, to twice as much. And how long, if it's going to help, how long till you see it's, a difference? Well, it's a, it, you know, Chinese medicine is not a, like, doesn't have, like you know, these are these are like these are as strong as pharmaceuticals. You know, they're uh, they're by prescription in China. You know, it's, uh, it's you cannot just like go to Rainbow and like take whole mm -hmm. bottles and um and, and experiment on your dog. You know, it's, it's serious it's serious medicine. So by themselves, um, they actually they could be. Again, this is this is probably like a uh, reason why people get funny with things because they they go like for one limb of therapy and that they're not being holistic. Like you think. Oh, you tried antibiotics, so now you're gonna try herbals, and and herbals didn't work, so now you're gonna try diet. Well, no, you have to use all of it. You really have to like you have to put out the fire. If it's a big fire, you use antibiotics. You have to you know make sure like you have to use food to make sure your body is getting what it needs to keep immune function at the right level. Uh, and if there's some, some like inherent weakness, constitutional deficit in, in how your body works, well, use herbal. You know, so it's a. Um, no, it, well, it's not simple. I mean, it's, you know, if it was, you'd be like getting a diagnosis from a computer. Um, but at the same time, if you try four different things at once, you don't really know which ones are helping and which ones are useless. Oh, well, there's ways of introducing things that, that well, sometimes you don't really see the effect till you add the second thing or third thing. Uh, but, okay. but you see, but you make observations as you introduce things and, and you see, like, you know, what is improving, what is getting worse. Um, no, it's not simple. I mean, it's, you know, it's a very complex system. So, um, you know, some things will cause a very immediate effect. Like, you know, you like, you know, boom, you you go from one kibble that your dog was in, like was always like bloody and, and had hard stomach to, you know, to this new hypoallergenic and like things are just great, you know, so like you fix it right there. And there's tons of dogs that are, all they need is a little <laughs> You know, so I always like fall back on like, what am I gonna be doing every day that I that I have no choice, uh, and it just has to happen. Well, you know, you can you can skip your herbals because like you just have them at work, you know, and, uh, and, uh, you, know, and, and, and you know you can catch it. To go to your countries, but you know you're gonna be eating today, right? You know you have to be eating and drinking, so so you can use food. You know, at least you should adjust your food to. Uh, to your body needs, um, and, um, and you know, you know often I need to work with a nutritionist that 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 guides you and kind of tells you like, you know, what kind of food is good for your body type, like, you know, what kind of food, you know, will will affect you the best, and and, and, and you know, have nice shiny hair and, and clean skin, and, and you feel full of energy, and and is that the food that, that makes you like feel tired always and and gets you bloating and, and loose toes, you know, so. Uh, you know, because sometimes again, it's a, it's a, like you know, you you acquire like certain beliefs that like, this is this is good for you. Like you know, uh, you know, you love carrots or or like apples or or chicken, and you think it's really tasty, and you're eating it, but maybe you're eating too much of it. You know, it's been too long, and and you're really missing out on on all the other things, and you're not really getting something that you're supposed to be getting from from those other groups of, of veggies that uh, and fruits and and meats and grains that you that you're just not taking in because you know like. You know strawberries, and they're always in the store. You know, and and you never like you never eat any other fruit because you have like two, two favorite fruits, two, two favorite vegetables, and one type of meat that you really love. Well, that that is not again. This is not how our bodies are are built. You know, we are designed to thrive, to to scavenge and and uh, and and dig for roots and pick berries and 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 eat fruits and and dig up stuff and kill animals and eat them. You know, and. Uh, not really for, not really designed for eating the same type of food all over and over again. So, uh, so again, it's, it's, these are these are kind of lifestyle issues. And the lifestyle, of course, is you know like there are some really 
bad misconceptions, you know, that are like passed from human food industry and human nutrition onto pet nutrition, you know. So, uh, like, you know, dogs, like, you know, you go to most of the business, like, well, you must feed your dog dog food, like, no, no human foods, you know, and, and, and your poor dogs, like, begging you for a slice of carrot, you know, because, because, or eating dirt, or eating poop, or eating grass, or eat, just like trying to find something else, but this prison food is in front of them, so, uh, so, um, you know, and, but, but, and getting sick is not like, like that, you know, unless you, you know, unless you're like a snake bites you, or, or some tarantula, or something, where you have, or the, you know, the, the vaccines, where you really, like, kick your immune system in the face, it takes a while to get sick, especially if, like from nutritional issues. You know, it takes you several months, if not years, to get sick from from your diet not containing things that your body requires to function properly. So um, variety, it would be my the the, day, the word of the day, and and you know, in year, you know, it's a uh, just sample everything. It's a uh, you know, this kind of the, the fun of of living is that you can or being a human or, or dog, we can eat anything we want. We can go to any place in the world and dig up some stuff and, and shoot down whatever is flying around and we can eat it. And, you know, and, and dogs, and then we, when we're done eating, we dump it to our dogs and they eat the rest of it. And, it, and it's, it's a perfect relationship. Um, you know, so, but here we are, like, you know, you're getting your, like, you love your cereal, like, you know, there goes another huge box of you know, Cheerios for another month and, and your soy milk and, you know, or like, and you only like broccoli and this type of cheese. Well, you know, you, it's like with the genetic, genetic, um, genetic health and genetic variability. Like if you have individuals that are from very distant genetic backgrounds, you're going to have very healthy offspring. So it's kind of the same with food. Like if you, if you combine many, many different things, you have, you know, like beautiful things coming out of it. If, you, if it's just like the same, like two things coming into the mix and, and and uh, and your body has only those building blocks to to, pr to produce those you know dozens if not hundreds of chemicals that it, that are used to communicate for cells to communicate with each other. Well, you're gonna have faulty communication. Your cells will not talk to each other very effectively, and you're gonna have all kinds of dysfunction, inflammation, excessive inflammation. Um, you know what we consider symptoms of poor health. Um, so, yes. But when your dog has a really sensitive digestion, mm -hmm. yeah. the last thing you feel like doing is changing her diet. I know. And every I know. time yeah. I give her something different, yeah. everything gets <laughs> yeah. messed up. I, right, you no, know, and, and I and this is you know, I, and I do this every day. You know, my I like you know, I finally like get my clients out of this out of this. You know, like one dog food only for this dog for life, and they're. You know, they, they found a homemade diet that does that works well, and it's you know, and it's like you know, chicken and sweet potato and pumpkin, and they're like, and they, and you know, the poop gets better. Like, you know, it's actually twice they poop that's that's pickle, and and people are like, oh, we're gonna stay here forever. Like, uh -uh, like no more changes. So this like you know, I I I've gained my ground, and and we're fixed. It's better. It's hundred percent better for you. Some better. Like, let's not mess with it. Well. No, you know it's uh, it's not gonna work forever. Uh, there's no perfect food that that you just have to stumble upon, and once you like once you eat it, you're gonna be great. Th there is no such thing as a complete nutrition in a meal. Um, there's just no way you can pack it all in. You know if um, you know if, if 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 our bodies you know requires 99% of like this group of foods and 1% and 0.9% of, of of these things and 0 0.09 of this and 0 0.009 of this. Well, it, it, it's going to come from very from various sources, not just from one type of food. So you you have to. It has to be. You really have to have a a great variety in a diet to to keep your cells healthy. Um, you know, based on your constitution and your and your uh, like who you are as a as an human animal being, you'll be more prone to certain things if your body doesn't get the right fuel. Like if you like A type and like hyper you know, yes, your liver is gonna crap out first. You know, if you if you like a home body and, and really mellow, your in, your intestines are gonna 
fail first if the body is not happy. Is happy. You know, if you're if you're like really fearful, uh, you know, individual, your kidneys are gonna, you know, go down first. So, um, so of course, like there's 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 like the weak point that you're going to eventually, you know, see whether it's uh, you know skin issues because of the liver toxicity or or or, or kidney problems. Kidney problems. Or, or heart issues, or intestinal dysfunction. Yes, it's it's um this is uh, the individual expression of symptoms of of this of disease, you know. So, and again, it's again, it's not like you can you, you you have one type of problem only. If you have one problem in the body, there's usually like a dozen smaller problems that goes along with it, and um, and sometimes people have like you know, they see all those symptoms, but they they don't even see what the problem is, you know. So like. My dog has chronic ear issues, and I I've been cleaning and putting Automax, you know I've been doing shampoos and you know I've been doing the fish oil and still problem, you know. So, well, yeah, I mean, it's sometimes it's like dig a little deeper to to see like is there like just one big problem that's causing all those smaller symptoms, and you know that that's when you hope to have a good uh, medical practitioner that can, you know, like get the Western medicine and Chinese medicine and some other medicines and, and the whole bag and, and like, you know, find the right cures for you. Mm -hmm. um, yes. um, instead of itching, if a dog licks a lot, is that like a sign of intestinal? Well, see, the licking, I, I find that, that uh, dogs that are itching tend to have, it tends, seems to be more of a like red inflamed skin or, or flamey um, damp heat, you know, whereas with licking is dryness, like it's a, you know, dog strength, like put some lotion on its on its hands because it's just chappy, it's like the skin is crawling because, you know, you're feeling that those dead cells trying to peel off and, well, you, I guess you first want to moisturize them, if it's not happening, you're not going to scrape, scrape them off. So, uh, but, you know, Okay, but this is like this is a perfect example of like the same thing being caused by two different things. Well, maybe the dog is drying its feet, maybe it has inflammation in, in its knuckles. Maybe it's just really trying. Some dogs will have bare knuckles from licking because they're so throbby in there. You know, some dogs have gastritis. They like they are being fed dry food, and you know they they always have heartburn, and they will they will find a way to to induce saliva production, whether it's eating grass or or chewing on things or or licking themselves, which is a perfectly good way of actually inducing saliva production, which is you know, a natural buffer for a stomach acid. So, you know, so the same symptom, like three different, completely different reasons why this could be happening. What did you just say about just, uh, one of my dog just has terrible, I mean, she's adopted older, and she just smells horrible. I mean, she smells like an old bowling alley, I, know I, that's I mean, seriously, yes. it's just, I mean, it's awful. Like, it's just, yeah. I mean, in, you know, like, I mean, the groomer, like, they can kind of make her not stink for, like, a week, but it's just, like, retro. Well, but this is, like, you know, this is, this is, uh, like, a good example of those toxins just oozing through the skin. Yeah, that's what like, I mean. You know, you, so gross. It's, it's like this, this, the, the sewer system's overflowing, oh, basically. Yeah. Um, because of, you know, it's usually, you know, again, sometimes it is, like, you know, the gut's, the gut inflammation and like you know the the gut being too leaky you know so both like things leak out or don't get absorbed and and things leak in also like all those bacterial toxins get absorbed you know so and again it all goes to your liver and and liver is just like you know just sweating trying to break everything down but there's all those you know all those alar alarm molecules that were produced somewhere and it's like you know like everyone's ringing bells you know it's like mm -hmm. Alarm, like, you know, like, there's something like coming at you or, or, or coming in you. Like, you have to, you know, like, have symptoms, have inflammatory symptoms, you know, vomit, have diarrhea, scratch your skin, open your pores, like, pump your oils, like, do something to get rid of this stuff, you know? Yeah, so, just like, dry, like a dry in, sounds like, you know, just oily and dry. You know? like, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, she's, I mean, she, I can tell she's like addicted to, like, yeah. Food diet, and like she doesn't mm. even want like she like eats the healthy stuff, but yeah. she like she's like I would prefer to just eat yeah. diet number three or whatever. Well, you know, and, and sometimes sometimes I'm lucky, and I and I you know I dig deep enough to find what the problem is, and you know, and fix it with one type of food or certain food rotation, and or certain like herbals or two, and some. But sometimes I'm not lucky, and there's like two major things that are broken, mm -hmm. and and sometimes like trying to fix one like really messes up with the other. 
you know, like, uh, like you know, you have this like dryness. You know, you have like all these signs of 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 oils not coming, like you know, being dry and and poor circulation and essential fatty acid deficiency. Well, and, and you're like, well, like let's get some fish oil, but you know, but actually it's because your gut is not working properly. You know, so so you have your liver blood deficiency, but it's actually caused by spleen chi deficiency because you have like food allergy or or your gut is somehow sensitized and it's just not doing a very good job observing things. Well, the hardest thing to observe is, is oils. Like you can get your simple sugars and amino acids, you know, other things, you know, fats are the toughest ones to uh, to assimilate. You know, so the first thing that you see in dogs that, that are having issues with their with their diet is poor, dull, flaky, weak coat. That is that is that is like number one symptom, you know, why why dogs come to see me because you know they're they have bad skin, and and you know and the itching doesn't really is not really far behind. You know that that wind, that failure to break down or clear inflammatory substances is not usually far behind. You know because again there's like other things break. You know like other things are dependent on those fatty acids to function properly and be balanced. And you know so it's not just you know if you if you only if the problem was only dry skin, well, we devise you know dog lotions and it'll be, it'll be fixed. You know, but there's but there's other things that are a consequence of of, of this of this primary problem that just happens to also cause dry feet or, or, or peeling skin. Uh, Eight twenty four. You guys, you guys have six more minutes. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got a good case for me? So, um, I'm not sure. We, we're new, we're new fosters to mm -hmm. the dog, mm -hmm. and he has been on a bunch of um, antibiotics for different things. Yeah. Mostly getting attacked by other dogs. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But he's been on a bunch of antibiotics, and when we got him, his coat was really messy, like mm -hmm. really uh, dry and kind of funky. Mm -hmm. And um, he has no teeth. Mm -hmm. I think he might have one. Somewhere in the back. He's a big dog. He right. looks Probably needs to come out. Yeah. Infected. Um, and anyway. so, well, most of the reasons were worn. I think he was chained for a long time, and he sat and gnawed, and they just kind of wore down. Because he has some of them, but they're below gum line, so you can see them, but you can't get them. Um, do you guys know what bruxism is? Mm -hmm. It's a bruxism. It's a it's a term and in, in, it's used in, in horses because they are very stressed out by people whipping them into running really fast. It's it's a it's a teeth grinding. Oh. Which is a another just like drooling and eating grass and licking your paws is a is a common symptom of heartburn or stomach okay. irritation. Oh. Which you know, which can be caused by nervousness. Like if you right. if you're like cold and like someone's yelling at you and you've been like locked up in a basement in a in a cage, you're gonna be nervous. So you're gonna you're gonna have a really bad stomach from that. And maybe you weren't maybe you no one gave you water for two days and you're really hydrated you're really hydrated. So So this this is like how he yeah, this is like why his teeth went bad. You know, he didn't have like periodontitis with inflammation and recession of gum line. Right. He, he was Grabbed grinding his teeth because he was going crazy. Okay, that makes sense. No. So, but the, the antibiotics, he's had so many. Um, and, uh, you know, and, the, and see, antibiotics are like, definitely have a bad rep. You know, they're, they're really awesome, very powerful, very, most of them are very, Amazing cooling herbals like when you have inflammation, when you have redness, they're super effective, super super fast. Most of them are like kind of natural, like fungal, like soil fungus derivatives, you know. So they're 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 glycoproteins or or like uh, protein ca complete carbohydrate complexes that that you know they kill bacteria. I, I always believe that antibiotics work because they bring down inflammation, and inflammation is what allows secondary bacterial infections to, to actually happen. You know, we are covered with bacteria. There's no there's no escaping it. You, you cannot be sterile ever right. and live, you know? So um so it's this is this is like you know um so so if if your dog is you know if your dog is if the skin is not very good, you know, and like it's sloughing and, and it's been like years and years of full nutrition and and in weakness, well, maybe you'll have some secondary infections in the skin or or mouth that have to be treated with antibiotics, you know. And and uh, you know when you have like truly broken parts, like someone's like really rotting teeth, 
and you really cannot allow this infection to spread elsewhere because like you have things like barely hanging anyways well you have to use antibiotics and you have to either pulse those dogs like you know once every like a week out of two weeks or or just keep them on one or more antibiotics just to just to prevent crisis mm -hmm. because herbals are not going to work and and feeding them raw foods is just not cooling enough you know it's, there's just too much inflammation generated at the at the infection site there, there's no there's no herbal that's going to suppress it enough as like this purified western chemical that we you know discovered in the in the soil fungus you know okay. so um so if he but if he's had his own with antibiotics now is there because in here you mentioned probiotics with mm -hmm. caution um yeah well, what is there any food that we, i mean we we, we we make food for him we don't mm -hmm. have any kibble in our house yes um and so but um as far as like is there anything that we that has a big effect kind of like a probiotic or should i just give him a probiotic yeah well you know i mean you eat probiotics all the time because you know you lick your we probiotics are you know, when you take antibiotics and you have bad digestion, well, that's because you're like zapping your good bugs continuously, you know, so like, like eventually, but you're also like eating them all the time because, you know, because like the stuff that's in you is stuff that's around you. It's not like, you know, these probiotics came from some, like, some source that you dip into once every several years. It's not like, you know, you, you know, you'll never get those probiotics again. They are around, like, you know, there, there are things that grow on, on grains, like moldy things, like like you know, lactobacillus, like things that grow on, on milk and milk products. You know, these are things that that you're always eating. So if you have inflammation, well, maybe your body is like flushing out all those good bugs as well, and you have to do something to to stop the inflammation. Otherwise, probiotics are just going to annoy you the immune system even more. Or like if you have this, you know, if you have a patient that's like that's so far gone where they do have this like flimminess to them like this, this stickiness well very like using yogurt or kefir might be too phlegm forming it, it might be like you know the, the the pores in the gut are so leaky you have like big macromolecules big casein milk protein molecules going and just hitting the walls of the immune system and 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 it's becoming a bad thing you know it's like a the gut is sensitized to the to the dairy products you know so some kids no but but there's other things like you know you can use sauerkraut for example, or you can you can ferment fiber, you can ferment vegetables, and and uh, and the bacterial count. If you do like a coleslaw, the bacterial count and and the coleslaw increases geometrically at some point. You know, it's uh, to, uh, and eventually you know you have spoilage because you have like too many bacteria in there. So if you like keep it under water or like in hermetically closed thing, well you you have this species and or those species and and not the bad ones like. Closer even because it's budget, you know. So, uh, so, um, but um, yeah, you know, if someone is dairy intolerant, I usually recommend sauerkraut. Oh, really? Sauerkraut. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, you know, cabbage is awesome. It's packed with vitamin C. The the bacterial products, uh, like bac bacterial fermentation products, is what you guys get from your central silver or whatever multivitamin you're taking. Be hmm. These are basically, these are basically your B vitamin. These are your like basic micronutrients. Yeah, we eat some of them, but most of them are actually made for us. You know, they're they're it's like it's like cows, you know, like think of cows, you know, cows cows are smart, you know, because they develop this huge vat that they ferment grass in, you know, or, or fiber. Well, you know, animals can't really we can't really break down cellulose, you know, because we're not we're not mushrooms, you know. So if you're if you're happen to be an animal kingdom you have to have a body that breaks down fiber for you, you know. So, um, so those those uh, microbes in the in the room and you know, do that. You know, they sit there and they chop things down and they produce all kinds of volatile fatty acids. You know that that eventually, like you know, the amylase um, and amylase and 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 the muscular stomach absorbs. You know, and and things are and these guys like those bugs have done such a good job chopping things down to the point where and also there's like all those dead bodies of bacteria floating in there which are packed with nutrients. It's like sprouts, you know. It's like eating sprouts. So, this is like, this is like the example of symbiosis, you know, where you have you have commensal organs. You have you are full of creatures that are not you, but then you really need them. Yeah. You need them. 
also need them because if you don't have them, like bad guys will come along and they'll colonize your intestinal lining. You have pathogenic strains setting in. You know, having being probiotic depleted makes you very susceptible to food poisoning because because the space is open, like it's not occupied. Thank you guys. That was awesome. Good question. Sauerkraut and cabbage are good sources of probiotics, is what you said, right? Cabbage and sauerkraut are good sources of for probiotics. Uh, well, well, when you think of fiber that we ferment, you know, I mean, you can definitely like you know cook, cook your beets and chop them. Well, you know, bacteria like different things too. So we've we found that like you know if you if you mix some flour with water. Mm -hmm. And put some yeast there, like you know, there's other bacteria that that you have on your hands that will make the bread rise and like you know will lead to you know making bread. Anyways, and there's a there's a like you know we learned how to ferment cabbage, you know, because oh, yeah, there are there are techniques of of increasing the bacterial load of the of the uh, food, you know, because it seems like we can use raw foods and we can use those little bugs to make them even more nutritious, which is what dogs do when they well. Well, when they dig a hole and put the bone in there and, and cover it, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is like a perfect example of anaerobic fermentation, you know. So so mm -hmm. like you cut off the oxygen, so there's no you don't, you won't get botulism, you know. But the enzymes are spilling and cells are breaking open and like things are getting self digested and and the good bugs that were there are are like also you know the bacterial count definitely does increase, you know. But they're good, good bacteria that aren't pathogenic. If there were some pathogenic ones, you know, the, the animal that you buried probably would have been sick. Uh, it happens to like, I mean, there's definitely, you know, there, there's some of that too, but like when you, when you, um, no, sorry, that's, that's total tangent. Um, anyways, um, the, uh, the, the, I mean, think, and the other thing, when it comes to compliance, you know, like things, I talk about how, you know, you are healthy because you eat healthy because it is your lifestyle to eat healthy or, you know, you know, you you were taught that you know the the cereal in the morning and McDonald's at lunch and Taco Bell in the evening is is a cool way of of, of eating. You know, so um, you know, and and it's a that you you really have to kind of change the beliefs system you have around the food. You know, and and uh, and be honest about like you know, are are you really healthy? Like, is your dog really healthy? Again, you know, we, we're we tend to be more willing to take risks with, with ourselves because we know how we feel when we eat, when we eat something. With dogs, mm -hmm. like, you know, you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna, do some, I'm gonna try something, it's gonna be this problem plus few more, you know, so I don't want to mess with anything. So, but, um, you know, A, you don't know what your dog thinks uh, or how they really feel. You know, you can watch your body language and, and, you, and you say, well, he's really bloated and he's farting, you know, so it's, a, you know, it's, it's a objective observation that means something. So, uh, but, um, Oh, another tangent. My point was like you have to make it easy on yourself. You have to like hopefully, hopefully you have a dog that does well on the types of foods that you do well on. You know, like people usually have like the same problems as their dogs, because you know you usually can eat the same as your dogs. You know, so it's hard this when if you're trying not to eat meat and dogs have to eat meat. That's the only right, 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 right. If you're trying to be vegetarian and they must eat. Thanks well, for coming. Um, Donation jar? Oh, yes. Thank you. Thanks um, for remembering. I was, I was afraid of creepy stare. I was trying to get your attention for <laughs> Because Mount Phil hosts these, um, these meetings for us, if you are interested in, pass, uh, in offering a donation, they will go directly to Muttville and caring for the dogs upstairs. And some of these that are down here now that are fosters. Uh, so yes, you know, you kind of have to mind the natural history of the species, uh, even though we have done a very good job converging to become omnivorous animals, uh, you know, dogs seem to, you know, have this, like they've retained enough of the wolf to, to need some animal protein, just like, you know, we have retained enough of our herbivorous ancestry to, to survive without any meat. You know, so you have to, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, convert. and I've tried really, really hard to manage, like, some of my patients on vegan diets, and it's really difficult. It's really, really difficult. Vegan uh, dogs? <laughs> That's amazing. Mm -hmm. 
and she reacted poorly actually to almost all meats. Like, mm. Oh wow! And uh -huh. so she did do really well on eggs, mm -hmm. but um, we're vegan. But that was never my intention with her. Mm -hmm. But she did great on it. Lived to thirteen and a half. And wow! She, passed, yeah. she did not pass because she got sick. She passed because she actually just fell mm -hmm. and died. Yeah. But um. And how many years? Thirteen and a half. I mean, how many years did you well, from the time you figured out that? That eggs was her best protein. How many years? That was, was about when she got old. So probably about when she turned eight or so. Or when she, I mean, not old, but you know what I mean. When she got so like old, five, old, six or, years when she was yeah, on that type we of. We did chicken for a while. You know, we stayed on chicken for a while. But then she got, she started reacting weird to chicken, no matter mm -hmm. how great the chicken was or anything else. Mm -hmm. um, but we had a Rottweiler who did great on beef. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. it just. Well, I mean, there, there's plenty of, you know, high protein foods that can be like legumes or beans, you know, yeah. so, and eggs in there, you know, and they all have different, or corn for the matter, or quinoa, you know, so they all, they all have different amino acid, amino acid profiles, you know, so hence, like different, like, nutritional currency that the body is getting yeah. from eating it. So, well, you know, it's not like raw food is a cure-all, you know, it's a, like, when you eat high protein diets, you know, you have a lot of, like, they're called end methylation products. You know, the, the protein actually creates a pretty weird acidic residue that has to be like combined with different things to detoxify. You know, so like if, again, if you if your liver is deficient or busy with other things, you might not be doing well with it. And and the the amino acid profile of the meats that you're using will be inflammation producing. So so this is yeah. So and you know. And I bet you could do a, a a blood allergy test, and whatever she was eating protein-wise would have been high, you know, because because just she just because she was reacting to every meat type. Yeah, she also and, moved from um, like you can offer her a doggy treat, or you can offer her an uh, apple, mm -hmm. and she goes to her. Excellent. Yeah. You know, and that's and, so great. <laughs> and to point out, you know, the egg is not just protein. You know, the the majority of the egg is fat. Yeah. And fats are very, very unlikely to produce inflammation, whereas proteins are. Very okay. Hmm. So proteins are like, you know, the, it's, it's a major, like, when you break down protein into, like, uh, you know, like more than eight amino acid chains, you know, that, that's how they fit into your antibodies and, and the cells in your system and how they, that's how they trigger. And that's, okay. that's how your learned immunity response body to things when you are re-exposed to them. Okay. You know, it is protein for the most part. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone, please grab a goodie bag and some ice cream samples.